Well, I'm going to begin by actually asking my Spurs bias question out the way so that Arsenal fans watching don't get too annoyed. But what did it feel like when that ball smashed the back of the net in 1991 at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final? It was good because I had a double hernia before that game and uh, the doctor says I'm in six weeks and uh, the game was in four weeks and I went to Terry and he said just wait and have injections because I'm not in the quarter finals I got injections before the game from year to year and then obviously I scored the winner but it stopped wearing off and I needed the operation and I got fit and uh, Terry went just do the best you can and uh, to score that goal because the Arsenal fans were behind that goal as well you know <laughs> And you can see them when you're taking a co- when you're taking a shot like that. You can look at the fans, and you can see all the signs of what they're giving and that. And then Lynx, Lynx come and said, "Just take the crack." And I said, "I'm gonna." Um, and it's like when you hit a ball well and that hard, you know you've done the right, you've done it well because you don't feel it in your foot. And uh, when I smashed it, it went. You know, I could see it going and going. And every time I see Dave Seaman, I give him a stick. I said, "Why do you sell me sell even worse trying to go for it as well?" And he let like, go off it. He was trying to defend himself yesterday, saying he's got his stud stuck in the ground. I said, no, you mean to say, look, idiot, your feet should have stayed on the ground. But now it's a great feeling, you know, especially in the semi-finals and playing for Spurs, you know, which I wanted to do, do really, really well for because I spent a lot of money on it, you know. Yeah, and I, was, I was wondering, I mean, in regards to the, to the documentary, I mean, when you watch it back, is it quite an emotional experience? Is it one that you find quite... Doing it was, you know, I haven't yet to see the edit cut yet. I didn't want to, you know, because I didn't want to, like... I wanted to be the, like the rest of them watching it because I want to know what it's like sometimes because when you're in it, you don't know what's happening. You know, so to actually sit down for a few days and look at everything, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours a day, to actually see what I went through. And so no doubt I'll probably have a few tears in it, but it was hard doing it. It was tough getting you know, brought out stuff that I've not brought out to anybody, you know. I just wanted the people to feel like, you know, not everything's rosy for Paul Gascoigne. On Gaza, you know, everyone thinks I've had a great career, great life. I had a great career, but you know, there's come some tough times through it. You know, things that I didn't want to have in my life. I didn't, I didn't ask to be alcohol to see. I didn't have ask to have OCD and what, what brought it on, the things that brought it on, and how it happened. You know, it was horrific. Um, that I had to face even just at such a young age, but. Uh, I'm like everyone else, you know, I suppose a lot of people in this world have got my, have had my problems, have got my problems, it's just unfortunate, God bless them, they've not had the support that I've had, you know, and they've, these guys suffer more than me, so I'm one of the fortunate guys, you know. One of my favourite aspects of the documentary is that it revels sort of predominantly in football. It's very much about your career, I'd say, first, and then secondary is the kind of off the pitch. Mm. Uh, and I'm just wondering if that was something that's quite important to you, particularly for the kind of the new generation of football fans who might know you more for what's happened off the pitch mm. rather than what happened on it. Well, it had to be off the pitch because I stopped playing then. It's <laughs> only since I stopped playing I started hounding this for a bit and then left me alone and just hounded it as a game. And no doubt when this comes out, they might start hounding us a little bit, but they might understand a little bit more the general public, but to do anyway, because when when I'm walking around the streets, everyone's really nice to me, you know, and vice versa, I'll be nice to them, I've always has been. I don't see any other way I live my life, you know. It's just when shit's been written about us, I kind of get out of it. It's like, I can, but it, it's hurt sometimes, it's damaging, you know, I'm not, when it's constant, now and again, you know, once once a month's right to me, but when it's constantly, it's, it's hard to take, and I know, listen, believe me, the press ain't gonna write any good thing, good things about us. You know, because I've written that bad, it makes them look idiots. You know, I'm an idiot myself. Or I can make myself out to be. And, uh, but, you know, I, I'm first I admit I've done things wrong in my life. Um, but that's me. So as many other people, just sort of mine gets scrutinised and all over the place. Um, but, you know, at the moment I'm happy in life. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but today I'm happy. And, you know, who. If everything was rosy every day, then life would be boring. Yeah. You know, I've always said sometimes you have the bad days to really enjoy the good days. Mm. And if you were playing today, what club do you think you'd be most likely to sign for? If, if we were kind of if the situation where you were at Newcastle and you're about to move to Spurs, if that was now, is there one club that you feel is best suited? To, I still to really, I mean, I mean, when I play for Spurs, well, the, the lads we had were great, great fun. Were, you know, great team team spirit. I mean, everyone wants to play for Barcelona the way they're playing. You know, they're a fantastic, unbelievable team. But I also want to play football the way we were taught as a kid. As you're an eight, nine year old, you get taught pass the ball and run. That's all I do. You look at them just little kids passing the ball about and running about. And they keep just damning the team is running. I mean, they were phenomenal. Um I mean Arsenal played great football. But yeah, Tottenham had honestly I wish I'd have stayed at Tottenham. 
when I look back and then go to Lazio because at that time when I left Tottenham I was flying I was playing the best football I mean, unbelievable people don't come into the prime until they're 27 I thought of Tottenham at 21 I was in my prime I was loving it you know great fans I remember that song when I played Newcastle put me in trouble that was like Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim through. Gascoigne was a jolly, but now he's a Jew. It's like, oh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had to go out that night uh, with Newcastle. So what that's all, what's all that about, you know? And I was like, oh, I'm fortunate I moved on. But, you know, the, my time at Spurs was fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. You know, there's some things you wish you were back in life, and that was one of them, you know? Yeah. So just finally, very quickly, uh, what's the one thing you'd most like to be remembered for? Um, your career? Being gone. me. Being you. Yeah, being me, um, you know, the happy go lucky guy. And I'm fortunate, had talent at his feet. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Cheers, it's been a real thank pleasure. You very much, man. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.